Hi, I'm Skol van Staden. I'm all the way from South Africa and I'm a design educator. I work for Swan University of Technology and I'm a lecturer in integrated communication design. So let's start. Today I'm going to talk about design education from a different light, which is a cosmological one to unpack the notions of tacit knowledge, epistemologies of design and the social, to relook the processes of design education, positively impacting on design educators and students. First, let me explain cosmicization, that in this case should be understood as seeing the individual as an eccentric observer and interpreter of the cosmos. Evidently, the term cosmos is a broad and complex one. The term can be traced back to the period between 600 and 450 BC, where it refers to the first scientific revolution where a group of Greek philosophers questioned the way in which people viewed and understood the natural world. I shall refer to Latour's framing of the concept as a structure in which society is the matrix within the social sciences, politics, the individual and technology coexisting in a network. Insights into the relationships between the elements within this matrix as a kind of gathering point is crucial. One then thinks of society therefore being constituted through and of this dynamics of the relationships and the concept is not limited to refer to a mere numerical collection of people but rather understanding what it is to be human which is to understand the social and society where the cosmos includes diverse elements relating to humans but also the relationships they have with their life world. So looking at the social paradigm as a networking of relationships, the term cosmos in turn is used here to refer to the common world, meaning our everyday life, an interplay between human and non-human actors. And the notion of the cosmos is the construct of the everyday or common world that here is situated alongside theories of cosmopolitanism and branching theories of cosmopolitics. Cosmopolitics is not beyond politics, but that which allows questioning the common world by addressing aspects that relate and coexist. Such politics, in other words, cosmopolitics, comprise of a mode to better understand ourselves and those in contrast to ourselves. So the concept of cosmosization here is a stance formed from the intersecting concepts of cosmopolitics and the common or cosmos. To provide a sense of selfhood, learning to know oneself immersed in the everyday through the cultures of others. It is a lens to look at reality from a holistic relational perspective and enables a process of creating reality, cosmicizing reality in order to create an environment filled with meaning. Philosophically, epistemology is defined as a theory of knowledge, in this case within the field of the philosophy of design. Epistemology refers to a distinct knowledge praxis, a design knowledge not always reliant on knowing what the final outcome of a design will be, but rather one that interrogates the conditions of formation of design knowledge. As such, this epistemology of design is concerned not only in knowing the facts about or knowledge of design, but also with the individual dynamics between people to foster a metacognitive awareness of design knowledge, which in turn will result in a su successful design outcome. Its epistemologies is to establish the usefulness of the latter of design practice and for each designer. Designers design for people and not things. The emphasis on the individual in design highlights the notion of experientiality. This experientiality signifies the meeting places formed by the relationships between the individual, the social, the cultural, deep social structures and space. This will lead to unpacking these relationships to clarify an already existing complex matrix, which is the common, that might refer here then to a framework of critique of the epistemology of design. From an experiential design point of view, the epistemology of design currently resides within a predominant modernist paradigm. This current modernist classification in design practice is more linked to the object than the individual or to the social praxis and spatial matrix within which the individual is co-immersed. The field of the philosophy of design in this instance has not yet been investigated from this perspective of cosmosization, which it ought to, 
to have a real look at the design practice and knowledge as a whole. In terms of design education, one has to reflect on a deeper investigation of design to unpack the discipline as a whole, which means one has to reflect on the difference between the philosophy of design from design philosophy. A simple distinction would be to say that one can conceptualize the philosophy of design as ingredients of a final product and then design philosophy as the theory of cooking. So we will have to investigate what these ingredients are, not only in terms of their meaning and understanding, but then see how these relationships between the ingredients are formed to be able to constitute something in terms of a design being worthwhile. Design practice has changed with the advent of technology, stressing the need for a metacognitive awareness of design knowledge. Such an awareness would include the assessment of the impact of individual interactions and experiences on successful design outcomes. However, this success may be defined as each new social or design development necessitates a realignment of its principles of good design. But understanding the importance of the relationships between man and machine, the space of interaction between the individual and object designed is at the center of good design. Realizing the importance of the space of interaction experientially will make it clear how people act, think, behave, respond and act with the objects designed. In design practice, this means that first a good understanding of people and their needs have to be established. And experience is paramount, especially in the case of design, establishing how fondly or distastefully things have been designed. Going back to design education and looking at higher education institutions, we can see that there are many schools of design that centers their education around core design principles and traditions that then later focus on challenging ideas of specialization. Advanced courses even within their structure is where the epistemology of design still is seen in a modernist classification, focusing on the object and the spatial attributes of the human and non-human relationship within design are not considered. And this consideration of challenges that need to be addressed sometimes are then overlooked when the social dynamics and networking relationships between individuals and their space of design for and by them are not reflected on. Systemic performance, contextual and global challenges in design that have to be discussed and dealt with in design curriculum, I suggest have to be relooked at as well that I then frame within an analogy of a spatial cookbook. If we then think of a cookbook, we then have recipes, ingredients, and how-to processes. So we can think of recipes as the designer and or of the context of design because it provides a variety of diverse indications of different roles of the designer, different contexts of design within the discipline from the principles around design, tapping into different avenues thereof. The ingredients can then be seen as the social, political and economic because it provides the different entities within society that interlink with one another, whereby one is made aware of how different entities are understood through becoming aware of their relationships with one another. The importance of politics within design and the importance of the economy, its interrelatedness within the social dynamics of a society that educates a cultural reflection of the self within such a space that as a whole reminds of an ontological reflection of entities relating to one another, signifying unpacking of being, the being of artifacts and of people, again, is that of a human and non-human relationship. Then the how-to process is seen as the practice of design, technology and the epistemology of design, because this is where the skills of design come together in a medium, cognitive and technical skill to be able to understand a process of design, taking together recipes and ingredients to develop successful, good design and designers. This is all found within the spatial spheres, within the social that cannot be shaped without understanding and reflecting on the human component. This means we are cosmicizing the role of design, the design practice and that of design education as a whole. In doing so, we are cosmicizing design education. Going beyond the traditional means of educating and understanding the process and application of design that at the end of the day remains tacit knowledge. But rather take the approach to understanding the metacognitive awareness of the epistemology of design, individual Im involvement and place within society, experientially part of social dynamics towards shaping not only sensitized individuals and designers, but allowing dialogue to be formed. The problem, even before lockdown, is that dialogue 
with InDesign and design education was lacking. Now in lockdown, the problem is the very means of using technology and online platforms to teach design. One cannot rely on technology to educate designers about design by means of developing technical skills, soft skill and theory that all have to interlink with one another in a practical forum. The very nature of design practice is informed by theory and also informs theory that in some way can be transferred through online means but it will leave out the practical component. Technology and being online takes away the true meaning and process of dialogue that is very needed in design and design education. It sensitizes conversation. It predetermines a conversation because the very act of being online giving a lecture is preset and constructed that does not allow for the engagement in true form with participation within an audience and students in a studio. The importance of dialogue cannot be overlooked, especially in the studio practice. And as far as online goes, we'll never be able to overturn the traditional studio practice because it is there where the engagement with the medium, knowledge and development of skill are not predetermined. As one listens and comprehends certain information, all of a sudden one develops new insight or it sparks a question about a subject matter in design that won't necessarily have come to life watching a lecture online or listening to a predetermined pre-structured lesson online. It is not to say that the education practice outside being online is not planned. It is very planned, but it allows scope for further development outside the boundaries of the limits of the platform of technology. It allows for engagement of hands-on in-studio participation where different cultural insights and experiences come together from students and lecturers to remold greater knowledge about that which is being taught within the studio environment. This space of engagement, the experiential understanding of knowledge and skill becomes that much more richer than behind the screen. Yes, there is currently a strive towards blended learning, online and offline teaching, which is understandable and good, yes, but the curriculum needs to be very clear about what understanding will be attained of design on which platform because there remains a need for foundational skill in design. One cannot rely on technology alone to develop design skills and knowledge, especially if one wants to avoid such knowledge to remain tacit. In other words, in some instances, one will have to go back to pencil and paper, understand the traditional mediums, learn the representational qualities with one's own observational skill to then later transfer into technological languages. And it is at this stage where one is to realize how one will continue the dialogue of a cosmosized design education between the individual, the social and the design practice to further develop not only the dialogue of design within the design discipline, but the dialogue holds about the social politics and the space they are in. And with design being political, its politics needs to be expressed, but the foundation has to be set. Wanting to develop sensitized citizen designers, as educators we will have to sensitize them about a deeper understanding of social issues, human behavior and new ethical challenges they need to respond to in a global society. We have to make sure that design education allows for an experiential relation towards worldly issues. Relooking the context of blended learning to allow a physical doing, the actual practice of design, dialogues being introduced and shaped, experiences expressed and investigated, all within the studio environment amongst other students and designers. The experientiality of design needs to come across in design education by cosmosizing it, not allowing technology to overshadow the development and teaching of technical skill, but rather to be a means to enhance the prowess of knowledge gained. So the knowledge and skill obtained by students need to be applied to real life situations, needs, concerns and desires of people, society and the social. The more real and hands on their design practice becomes, the more ready they will be for industry. The design curriculum must move away from how pretty it looks on paper and focus really on establishing strong foundations of core design skills and knowledge that include traditional drawing and illustration practices dialogues, critical thinking, human-centeredness, cosmologically reformulated epistemologies of design, integration of social and political ties, 
working processes and networking, practice research, and not be fooled by the showmanship of technology and being online. Thanks.